This week, Nation's Business focuses on one of the biggest projects the Ministry of Information has undertaken in preserving the nation's documented history. These audiovisual materials have been stored in 16mm films, umatic and Batacam tapes, and photographs which are inaccessible to the public due to the changes in technology. These were the sad days, the great days of memory, when the battalion went away. Suva, October the 10th, 1970, a moment the people will always remember. Many of these accounts capture the development of Fiji through time. A valuable tool for researchers and decision makers who consult the National Archives to determine precedents, understand their obligations and formulate policies that are beneficial for all citizens. While many of today's generation do not realize the significance of these materials, these audiovisual archival materials relate to our rich local and national heritage and is the bridge that links our past to our present. Looking at that film, sitting in the archives, knowing that we couldn't ever view it, and some of it has probably never been viewed. The estimated cost of the digitalization is approximately $1 million. The relevance of our audio and visual history has somewhat been ignored in the past, but for the first time, the Bunimarama government has taken the initiative to spearhead the preservation of Fiji's historical film, which are all currently located at the archives. So the quicker we could you know, get that out, find a company like Damsmart that could actually digitalise it for us um, and know that it was in safe hands because giving up a collection a, as fast as this and sending it uh, to Australia, we had to make sure that you know, we had the right people to, to do the job um, and who were really passionate about what they did as well. So um, the journey has been a long one but um, we're, you know, we're nearly at the end of it and then you know, Fiji will be able to see what, you know, what's been buried in those archives since the, you know, the early, early 40s. Many of these audiovisual materials were shipped to Canberra, Australia to undergo technical preservation known as digitization. Images stored in these 16mm films or umatic tapes will, for the first time, be made accessible to members of the public through converting it to digital format. The fragility of audiovisual materials, the rapid decline of digital technologies, coupled with the necessity of transmitting this content to future generations, makes digitization an urgent and an important task for all countries. So the most important aspect is, is having this collection accessible to everybody. Through the digitalization process, now it will be accessible. So our future plans are obviously um, you know, to produce TV series around it, to be able to air it on TV, to take it out to the schools, to the rural areas, and to have this film playing as, as much as we possibly can because you know, there's no point of it sitting back in the archive. So it's, it's giving access to all the people of Fiji to, to see some of the treasures that we, we've got on film here. Nation's Business travels to Dam Smart in Australia to find out how the audiovisual materials are transferred to digital format. When I actually went uh, to Suva and examined the collection closely, it became apparent that, that it was going to be an extremely challenging job. Um, the condition of the, the film and videotape um, is probably, you know, it was one of the, the most deteriorated collections that we, we'd considered working with. Uh, very high levels of mould infection, very high levels of, of uh, physical deterioration of both the film and the, and the videotape recordings. Um, but we love a challenge. Over a total of two and a half thousand items were sent to Australia to be cleaned and processed and is extremely a complex process. David McGruther is a film restoration specialist who specialises in restoring audiovisual footage stored in 16mm films. I love it. I love it. Um, 
it's a dying format, but it, it's one that we need to take care of because you know, there is a lot of content out there that has not been preserved yet that certainly deserves, well, deserves to be so. Uh, for this collection, I believe it was probably the 35 millimeter film, which was Return of the Fiji Battalion. That was dated around 1946, I believe. Um, there were other, other films from the 1950s and early 1960s, but then there's, there's a leap from that point through to about the 1970s. The film now is going through our scanner or our, our telecine, and it's using a HD television camera on macro to effectively capture a frame by frame file for, for this particular film. Um, the digital image as produced by the camera is, is produced exactly here and this is where I do my colour correction. So if I'm looking at this and then looking at my scopes and I'm having an excess of light or my blacks are too dark so that the density is, is removing detail from the image, then I make corrections to that in the first instance. And from that point, I then do colour correction. If the blacks and the whites are starting to exhibit colours that they shouldn't, effectively that's called decontamination. I'm taking the colour away from the whites and away from the blacks and then making other corrections around the rest of the image so that it looks as realistic as possible. Eve Withers, the specialist in tape conservation and preservation, begins the manual process of cleaning the tapes by removing dust and mould that have accumulated on the tapes over the years. First of all, the assessment's the most important thing. When every carrier is different, every carrier has different issues. Um, the decay, the hydrolysis that comes along with mould and heat and humidity and all those sorts of things, you've just got to assess each one. I suppose the most important thing is making sure that physically the carrier is totally clean. Once the mould starts to set in, you get all sorts of issues. You get things like um, that the mould will start to form and crystallise on the top, so it's sticking all of the tape together and it's binding it all together. The other thing is that once once that decay starts, it's, it will start to get very sticky. The binder will break down, causing hydrolysis. It's a process that involves a lot of skill and patience. Basically what's happening here is this on the side of the pellon, that's all of the um, oxide and debris on the tape. And coming off um, all the white speckly stuff, that's all the dead mould that has come off. The pellon cl has cleaned it and um, it's being sucked up into um, the filter up here. Um, when it's gone through its process, it's in reverse now and it's nearly finished, we'll take it out and we'll reassess and see whether we really need to clean it again or whether it will go through the machine. From the tape preservation comes the digitisation phase, or converting analogue material to digital. We meet up with Amy Kitty, who explains what processes are involved in digitisation. Okay, basically our job is to monitor the quality of the vision. This here is our, um, the XML, which basically shows every single frame of content and vision, sound, any of the issues that we've got. So these are servo loss, so any time that possibly there's a bit of damage or there's been a tape splice or something like that, it'll pop up as a, a visual cue for us to actually have a look at that point on the tape, make sure there's audio, there's video, see what any of the issues are and then we can take that over to the QC station and actually check out what's happened at that point on the tape. These little parts here show where it's been clipped up. So basically that's just where they've been edited together. And I'm just stuck in a little bit here to show that, you know, there was a bit missing. We weren't actually able to con capture that part of the tape. And so basically we try and get as much of the footage as, you know, possible. So we take it back as far as possible to the splice as we can. And yeah, we do another part and we bring it over here and we clip them together and then we export them out. This stage here, it will take an hour to migrate it and then it's possibly about 20 minutes worth of post-processing and then five or 10 minutes to put it into the catalogue and, uh, and QC it and all that sort of stuff. If a tape's been given us a few issues, you know, and you're really delighted to just, you know, finally either get it cleaned, or, you know, get it all the way through the cleaner and then get it through this process here. My little, little 
<laughs> so yeah. After the digitization phase comes the archival of footage, where we speak to Andrew Martin. The damn smart operators go through a process where they write information about the quality of the transfer um, and any other descriptive information that we've received from Fiji, we include and associate with the media file. Basically, this system has been designed for searching, adding extra information into the clip to make it more searchable. Um, just having a bunch of digital files can be just as difficult as having the original media. To be able to search on that information is the real key. So currently at the moment there's um, approximately 1,000 clips that are in there mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's growing as, as we go through the, the final stages of digitisation. I think one of the most memorable components of the collection that I've seen is uh, Prince Philip enjoying a carver ceremony. Um, maybe over enjoying a carver <laughs> ceremony, perhaps. Um, that's certainly very memorable. Um, I, I think one of the things that, that sticks out, um, you know, for the for the staff in particular, is that throughout the collection is the, you know, the the overwhelming um, uh, friendliness and enthusiasm of the Fijian people. Uh, be it, you know, looking at a, a film of the 1963 Pacific Games and the the way that the the Fijian people embrace that game, that ceremony coming to Fiji. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the language teachings, some of the tribal videos, some of the, um, you know, the, the, the cultural performances in particular. Um, all of those things, uh, you know, really stand out uh, as making this a, a unique and uh, culturally significant collection. Um, personally, I love watching all the Flying Fijians action. Uh, <laughs> All, all the all the Fiji and rugby, uh, you know, various games in there versus the All Blacks and the Wallabies. Um, so no doubt that that will be well well received in Fiji as well. developments taking place, people of Fiji will, for the first time, have access to the nation's filmed archives. These materials will allow many users to see first-hand historical information on original pieces. Okay, so there'll be, uh, it's a server-based product, which will have um, what we call proxies or low-resolution versions, um, which are small enough to go onto hard drive. The high-resolution um, files and versions are too large for hard drive, so we've put them onto data tape. This is called LTO5. Um, you can fit 1.5 terabytes on, on one of these tapes, and we have a duplicate copy of each tape. So there's an A copy and a B copy for disaster recovery. Um, just to give you an idea of how much material we can fit on here, with one of these original tapes that we've digitised, we can fit 100 of these onto one of these tapes. In terms of footage storage, Martin says the digitization gives television editors a proper cataloging system and the opportunity to access footage. The usability and the uh, interface of the archive is completely configurable. So we can set it up so that it's simple and easy to use. But then if there's, um, say, editors uh, or other technical staff that need to uh, get into further information within the system, we can give them access to that type of information. I do spend a little bit of time here and there being able to you know, make sure that, uh, that the quality is, is of um, a high standard. Currently here, this, in terms of hardware, this is the system that will be returned to Fiji. Basically, this uh, bottom uh, section is uh, the LTO library. So the LTO library contains all of the LTO tapes. So basically, there's a, a magazine, there's four magazines that contain each of the LTO tapes and that's a method of loading in uh, an LTO tape there. And there's two LTO drives also within here, so there's uh, two LTO5 drives. All in all, with great strides taken to preserve the nation's audiovisual history, 
This gives many people the opportunity to see how the nation has developed over the years. You know, I think one of the things that, that drives our staff to keep going with, with a project of, of such difficulty um, is knowing that, um, you know, knowing that, that, that the, the content that we're preserving and, the, and that we're, we're handing back to, uh, to the people of Fiji has, is going to be of such significant value and meaning to, to various people or, or the entire nation of Fiji. Mm. Uh, and, and that's what really has kept, kept our people enthused and dedicated to the project, knowing that that outcome that, that we're going to achieve and we're going to deliver back to Suva is going to be so well received and it's really going to, you know, it's really going to make history accessible for the people of Fiji. This is really just the beginning. We, we have, you know, there's other steps that we have to take to make sure that, that this project um, reaches the people. But, you know, I'm very happy with the way that it's gone. It's gone very smoothly. We've had no major um, problems with it. And, um, you know, the next thing is, is showing it and unveiling it for the, for the citizens of Fiji.